Italian men, Croatian men, are they different? My name is Victoria Rose and I am coming to you live from my bedroom here in Podstrana, Croatia. Today, let's have a fun live stream as we have a look at the men of this part of the world. is Victoria Rose and I love live streaming because with live streaming you can get your message out to the world. If you are looking at a way where you can grow your small business, grow your message, then you should be live streaming. And just before I go on, next Wednesday, I am running the very first ever live stream think tank for nine women in business who want to grow their business in the quickest, most funnest way and who are really cool about being the star in their own global TV show. It is so easy to do that. If you want to be one of those nine women, pop yes in the comments or just come along and PM me before we go any further i would like to heart you hi marie thank you for joining me and yes i would like to heart you today because the world needs more heart and as i've discovered in all of this almost seven decades that i've walked on this planet we all bleed red Let's get on to the business at hand. Today's live stream is in three parts. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> the first part, we're going to have a look at those Italian men. The second part, we're going to look at those Croatian men. And then we'll ask ourselves, are they different? I'll give you my opinion and you are more than welcome to make comments to share your experiences. I can easily pop you on the screen so everyone else gets a chance to answer your question or your comment as well. There is a caveat before I go any further though. Please understand that these are purely my observations. I haven't met all the Italian men that there are to meet in the world. Whew, thank goodness. I haven't met hardly any of the Croatian men that are to meet in the world. And there absolutely is no romantic intention here or experience that I'm about to share with you. So for those of you who have messaged me about any romantic interest happening, no. <laughs> Let's go on at, to part one, which is my observation of Italian men. But before we go there, I do want to dip into my past a bit. The very, very first Italian man that made a big impression on me. Oh, I'd better tell you where I'm from. I lived most of my life in Fremantle and surrounding areas. And in Western Australia, where Fremantle is, there are a lot of Italians and a lot of English people migrated there as well. So in growing up, I had quite a bit to do with Italians and with English people. Now, I remember one Italian guy that was just incredible. Gianni, for those of you from Western Australia, Fremantle in particular, you may remember old Papa's That Cafe. Gianni, what was so good about him? Well, he was a slimish sort of Italian guy, beautiful skin, little thin pencil mo. And what was good about Gianni? He treated you like 
royalty. It didn't matter. Hey, Matea, thanks for joining. It didn't matter whether you're tall, short, fat, thin, if you were, and what age. He treated you exactly the same. And that treating you embraced the fact that he enjoyed the company of women. And he was never slimy. He was never uh, a pervert, happily married with, with children. But Johnny had that incredible way uh, to interact with his customers. And he did a really great job. Here's one more thing from the past. When I turned 50 in the year 2000, I gave myself a seven week solo, thank you for the heart, backpacking trip to Italy and the Greek islands. So in Rome, talk, so we're talking about Italian men, right? I remember well, there are a few of incidents, but let's just look at this one. So here I am walking down a busy street of Rome. Hey, Desley. And there's this guy just stops his Italian guy, stops his car in the middle of the road, like just stops it in a busy road, gets out of the car and comes to the pavement and starts talking to me. <laughs> so as this little humble Aussie, shabby Aussie backpacker, because if there's one thing I will say, the way that the women dress both in Italy and in Croatia, even more in Croatia, you might be surprised to hear, they really value. And the only reason you'd be surprised to hear this if you're in Australia, if you're watching from Australia now, is that we don't get a lot of information about Croatia. I don't even think I'd ever, ever met a Croatian before. I've since found out I've got a couple of them as Facebook friends. <laughs> They're probably going to watch the replay. By the way, hello, replay viewers. Thank you for watching. You can still comment. Let's find out what you think about this debate. Italian men, Croatian men, are they different? <laughs> So that is the past of my experience, cherry picked a couple of them, my experience of Italian men. Let's now go to my recent experience. I landed in Rome on the 22nd of August, not that long ago. And what has happened since then to cause me to realize or to get a really strong opinion about Italian men. First of all, I have to tell you about the amazing experience where my earth moved. I realized not that long ago that blue eyed men, most of, well, as a matter of fact, all the important men in my life, not that there were that many of them, I hasten to add, all the important men in my life all had blue eyes. Blue eyes are dangerous. So here I am in Rome. It's a hot day. I'm kind of going the wrong way. <laughs> so I see these two men and I just amble over and I say to one of them and I, uh, well, I ask him, can you tell me the way to go? And he looked up underneath his cap and he flashed those blue eyes at me. And it was like, ah, oh, my only regret so far is that I did not take a photo of these two enchanting Italian men. So it was like, yes, I'm still alive. <laughs> men can still, or a man can still make my heart go a little bit of pitter patter. And I have to say that that was something that was really a great experience for me. So where to now? From Rome, I went down to a little mountain village called Tramatola. So here are my observations further to the initial ones around Italian men. It appears that no matter what age an Italian man is, they will look you up and down. <laughs> <laughs> they'll look in sort of this area a lot and then now their eyes will roam up and down your body and they do this right in front of you so you're looking them in the eyes 
and they're still looking you up and down. I don't even think they're aware that they're doing it. And I guess the most dramatic experience I had, so Tramutola is this mountain village in the south of Italy. And it had lots of, therefore, has lots of really steep roads. And so this, this guy, honestly, would have to be, would have had to have been a hundred. So no one there spoke English except for a couple of words with one person. And I don't, and I speak very limited Italian, very limited. Uh, and, but he's there and he's, and for some reason he still wanted to talk to me in Italian because apparently I look Italian. And, but he could not stop looking me up and down. Now, I kind of don't like that, but it was just so obvious and he was so unaware that that's what he was doing. And he was, you know, age doesn't matter. <laughs> the young ones aren't quite like that, I have to reassure you. Although Italian men do love women. They enjoy women. Speaking to an Italian woman, she shared with me. But that's the problem with Italian men. They get their vowels mixed up. They should love Italian and Italian woman. One woman. But no, they love women. Italian women, actually, it doesn't matter what nationality you are. If you're a woman, they love you. <laughs> so that was her irritation with her husband. So when an Italian man is, as we say in Australia, perving, they are, and look, women do it as well. I mean, we're the ones that look at other women and uh, in admiration, some of us in, in envy and uh, checking out, making a judgment. But Italian men are known for the obvious perv, and that's actually what they do. So uh, when I'm talking about Italian men, they have a look, and that look, I would say, when they're looking at you, when they do look you in the eye, it is a friendly look. It's open. They are open to listening to you whilst their eyes are roaming up and down your body. <laughs> but generally, it is a friendly look. And that's where we now go to part two when we're talking about those e Croatian, those Croatian men. And I have to share with you the Croatian look. I noticed this straight away and my friends back in Australia have said, what is this Croatian look that you talk about? I've shared it once already in a video, but I'm about to share it again. So here we are. <laughs> you're in Croatia and you're, you go into a cafe to get a coffee or talking to someone for whatever reason and you get the look. The look communicates to you that they don't like you. Further to that, it can even be you're a tourist. I know our economy relies on your tourist dollars, but that doesn't mean I have to like you. <laughs> so that look that you're uh, confronted with, and it's not just me, because I do have, <laughs> thank you for the hearts. I know it's quite amazing, really. Here's a heart back to you. Uh, there is that look, and here's the thing if you're solo traveling, as a woman especially, because it seems that Croatian women are sterner in that look. That's been my experience anyway. But you are not to be daunted by the Croatian look, because I've discovered that if you still maintain your openness, your friendliness, your smiley face, then uh, and actually show you are human you're just not there to um, 
plunder and, and take advantage of the low cost of living here and be uncaring about the environment and of the people that actually live there. So far, my experience has been that that barrier, that Croatian look actually dissolves. But I was curious, how has this Croatian look developed? And I found something that's a bit of fun that uh, I think this might explain a thing or two. <laughs> Apologies to all my Croatian friends. I love that video of that little, I call it the grumpy face baby. And I came across it quite by accident yesterday and I thought, I've got to do this grumpy face video. Let's now focus purely on Croatian men. Oh, and by the way, just like Italian women, as a woman, even at this age, uh, I do feel that the look, the Croatian look from women is generally sterner. Yeah, I feel. So uh, one of my friends has described Croatian or asked about the Croatian men. She said, I have this feeling that they would be stoic. And that means... I actually had to look up for the exact defini definition so that I could share it with you. That means that they endure pain and hardship without showing their feelings or their emotions. And interestingly, when we have a look at the history, mind you, it all depends how far back we go for any of our cultures, there is that turbulent and, and violent background. It just all depends how far you go back. So I guess you could say that about Croatian men. So here are my few insights. Again, once you just smile and just be yourself, don't be intimidated by the Croatian look. They'll look at you. They don't look you up and down, by the way. My observation is, and I've checked this out with a few of my Croatian friends, Croatian men don't purr. They do, but they're way more subtle about looking at women than what Italian men are. You might just catch a little flick of the eyes, but when you are looking at them in the eyes, they're looking at you in the eyes. They're amazing. Hey, Nicole, thank you for joining. So that was really lovely. I really like that about Croatian men. The other thing about Croatian men is their energy. I believe, and what I've seen, is that Croatian men are more grounded. They seem to be, I don't know, more solid. <laughs> I, I still haven't quite got what that feeling is. In Croatia, I've lived in Opatia. I've spent three days in, uh, five days actually, in Jospodol. Uh, you should watch episode six. This is episode seven. I've spent three days in Zagreb and I've been down here now in Podstrana for, I think it's a week, a week today. So uh, I have lived in those different areas. And so there we have it about um, the look of a Croatian man that actually also seem to have a squarer features, not square, but squarer, sort of more attractive in many ways to actually look at. Oh, and guess what? Just yesterday, I happened to see this Croatian guy, beautifully tanned, absolutely amazing, lovely young man with the most startling blue eyes. 
<laughs> I did probe on him a little bit. <laughs> but it was all harmless. It was enjoying the beauty of another human. Let me now talk about an insight that I got from someone I met in Opatia. And what Danibor told me was that in Croatia, men will put up with living in shared accommodation or inferior accommodation. They'll share with six, with 10, whatever. Their accommodation takes second place to their car. It is way more important for them to how they feel about themselves, to how they present to other people, is uh, to be driving around in a really great car. Uh, it's probably not that much different to Australian men, I would have to say, although perhaps they value both. Oh, and, uh, and let's have a look. In um, When I went to Zagreb, the... Airbnb host met me out the front, Evan, and my backpack is heavy, guys. I have to tell you, I'm a strong woman still, and my backpack is really heavy. My trolley bag cannot fit another thing. I'm going to have to divest myself of some of those things I've got in there, but it's really heavy. So Evan offered to pick up my backpack and take my trolley bag. He, Evan, is a tall, skinny Croatian, attractive-looking face, but tall and skinny. And I mention that only because I happen to know that tall people often, not always, have back issues. And he probably does not realise from the look of my backpack just how heavy it is. So I said to him, oh, Evan, it's really, really heavy. Be careful. To which he responded, get ready for this. He was quite offended, actually. He said to me, I'm a man. <laughs> so I had this little inward chuckle and I just thought, okay, <laughs> I just wanted to alert you to how heavy so you wouldn't put your back out. But he picked it up and I saw a little, little buckle of the knees, but not very much. He picked it up, didn't say a word, was stoic, hauled it all the way up the stairs. <laughs> so here's the other thing too about Croatian men. Now this is Italian as well. Uh, I've noticed it a lot with Croatian men. They chain smoke. Now not all of them, and the women do as well, but this is about Croatian men, right? They smoke a lot. Their cigarettes here, well, to buy the same packet of cigarettes in, uh, in, yeah, cigarettes here, if you bought that in Australia, you would be paying five times as much. So cigarettes here are really, really cheap. Now, that's the cost of living overall is quite cheap, but that does translate into that their wages are very, very low. I happen to know of a Croatian woman, she's 50 years old, and she is uh, what she's being paid here in Croatia. She works 15 days, then she has one day off. What she's being paid here for the month, she would earn in the UK in one week, and that's working five, possibly six days in that one week. So it's that incredible smoking, no matter where you go. There are people puffing and they don't just have one. They just keep absolutely puffing. But not all Croatian men smoke. Here I was just three days ago having an incredible um, chicken salad. Uh, really amazing. How much did that cost me? $4.50. Really really beautiful, freshly cooked right before my very eyes, just yummy. And I'm sat down at the table and there's this young Croatian man and or husband and wife with their little baby. <clears throat> they both get this huge meal because you get these servings are big, even at that price. And he's woofing away into chomping away into his meal and the wife isn't eating her meal. She's wrapped it up in, in alcohol and she's putting it aside. We sit there, I'm chomp, chomping away as well, and then I notice this. She got out a cigarette, 
when she got that cigarette out, she tapped it on the tabletop a couple of times, then picked it up. And as she picked it up, her husband said something, obviously in Croatian, <laughs> plucked the cigarette from between her fingers, walked over to the rubbish bin and put it in the bin. So to me, that proves how gutsy Croatian men are. Can you, can you imagine an Australian guy doing that to an Australian woman? I'm not quite sure. I mean, clearly, clearly he's helping her and they've come to some arrangement, I hope. And she didn't say anything and she did end up eating her roll after about another five minutes. But I just thought it was an incredibly interesting interaction. So... Uh, okay, so the last thing I want to say about Croatian men, when I was in Zagreb, I ended up, can you believe it, I ended up picking out an Italian restaurant to eat because finding places to eat, there are heap of cafes, but now that we're off season, there aren't so many places have actually closed down their kitchen. So to find a place that will serve food isn't that easy, but... I was directed to this one restaurant and yep, it's an Italian restaurant. So I sat down and I had one of the best meals I've had. I had ox cheek, <gasps> but uh, it was delicious. I just have to say it was fabulous. And I'm sat there eating with the glasses sparkling and I noticed this husband and wife sitting over at the table with their little child. And the husband is talking to the wife in an animated way. And as he's, but as he's talking to her, boy, does he have the roving eyes. He, uh, even someone, so there's a barrier, even someone walking on the other side of the street, a woman, he would just, he's a tall, looked like he was a tall guy. He would just sort of lift himself up and look out over the barrier, rarely looked his wife in the eyes, who so would be looking over her head at the women that are, walking and there are some pretty stunning women there that day myself included of course <laughs> but here's what i got he wasn't croatian he was either first of all i thought he was french and he probably could have been french but i do believe that he was italian i wasn't quite close enough to hear what he was talking about so there we have it. There my there's part one Italian men, part two Croatian men. So part three is are they different? They sure are. They absolutely are different. And whilst they are gem, there are gems in every single culture, and there are those in every single culture that are not gems. Yep. But just on my experiences so far, I think the Croatian men appear to be more caring of their women and also uh, don't have their women be confronted with the roving eyes. Now, that could be because their women don't let them have the roving eyes. I haven't got that are yet in understanding how these different cultures work. My name is Victoria Rose. Are you going live to get your message out to the world? It could be a personal message. It could be a vision. It could be a belief. It could be your the, the message, the reason why you started your business. It could be a cause. Do you really, really care about so much of stuff that's happening in the world? You know what? Get up, step up and go live. If you'd like to be one of the nine women in business on the first ever live stream Think Tank, it's a Zoom online presentation happening next Wednesday, just put yes in the comments or reach out to me in a private message on location in Podstrana, Croatia. I'll be back next Thursday. Next Thursday, I'll probably take you out 
and show you some of the amazing and beautiful coastline that I have the joy to look out over every single day. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you, Replay viewers.